Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. One organization that has long been at the forefront of the U.S. military's advancement is DARPA, or the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. First established in 1958, DARPA has one goal, to maintain the United States' technological superiority. Since its founding, it has been behind the development of stealth aircraft, GPS, and one of the most exciting fields in warfare, robotics. For the past decade, the organization has hosted the DARPA Robotics Challenge. The competition is specifically aimed to accelerate the development of advanced robotic systems that could assist in a wide range of scenarios, particularly disaster response. DARPA has encouraged teams from around the world to develop humanoid and semi-humanoid capable of performing actions like navigating debris, operating tools, driving vehicles, and performing rescue operations in conditions that might be too dangerous for humans. The prize pool consists of around $3.5 million, but to earn it, robots must successfully accomplish tasks such as climbing stairs, cutting through walls, and reconnecting power lines. One of the first and most important tests takes place in the debris room. As disaster areas are often covered with debris of all sizes, robots must be able to safely navigate these areas. To properly test the robots' dexterity, balance, perception, and problem-solving abilities. Some of the debris has been arranged so that it must be manually manipulated before the robot can pass. One of the most difficult aspects of the DARPA Robotics Challenge is that communication between robots and the operators is purposefully minimized. For this reason, the robots must be able to perform their tasks autonomously or with almost no assistance. Teams first place their robots inside a utility vehicle, which they must drive through a slalom course, dodging obstructions as they go. Next, they need to egress the vehicle without falling, something that is considered one of the most difficult parts of the test. Teams competing in DARPA have designed a wide range of robots in an attempt to master the obstacle course. Many of these have proved better suited to certain tasks than others. Though the entire challenge is treated like a sporting event, the entire point of the exercise is to innovate in ways that will hopefully save lives in the future. Thanks to technological innovations, each year's robots represent a massive improvement from the previous year. The teams who compete in DARPA Robotics Challenge come from all over the world, including Germany, Korea, and the United States.
Many of the engineers are members of extremely prestigious organizations, such as the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and Carnegie Mellon University. Each team brings their own unique approaches to the contest, using various control methods, actuators, and AI-driven navigation systems. The designs and locomotion of each robot also differ significantly, as teams strive every year to further refine movements and abilities. While the DARPA Robotics Challenge is mainly focused on disaster response, many of the organization's major robotic developments have later been adapted for military use. One of the most famous examples of this is the Leggett Squad Support System, or LS3. Essentially a robotic pack horse, the LS-3 was envisioned as a military mule that could carry weapons, ammunition, and other provisions for small groups of soldiers. Not only can the four-legged LS-3 carry up to 800 pounds of equipment, it can navigate a wide range of environments. Unfortunately, this robot was eventually abandoned due to noise problems. Yet, the LS-3 is far from the only four-legged robot to be considered for military applications. Boston Dynamics and Ghost Robotics have both developed robotic dogs which are currently being tested for jobs related to reconnaissance, perimeter security, and surveillance. These state-of-the-art machines are much smaller, far quieter, and use AI-driven vision to react to various stimuli in real time. They can even right themselves in the event they are knocked over. Many experts predict that units like these could soon become indispensable members of patrol teams, providing squads with a wide range of enhanced capabilities. Like the DARPA Challenge robots, one of the biggest appeals of utilizing these devices in the field is that they can operate in areas that might otherwise put human lives at risk. This includes jobs related to tunnel exploration, explosive ordnance disposal, and search and rescue missions. Environments like alleyways and tunnels can pose serious risks to life soldiers, but robots can enter and provide crucial reconnaissance with minimal risk to operators. Of course, not all combat-related roles come down to surveillance, bomb disposal, and conveyance. Autonomous robotic systems are also being used for aircraft maintenance and cleaning, which serves to reduce manual labor and improve efficiency. These robots not only inspect, clean, and apply coatings to aircraft, but they can also detect structural weaknesses that might go unnoticed by human eyes.
The Air Force and Army are by no means the only part of the United States defense apparatus utilizing robotics. The Navy is also testing different types of robotic systems out on board their ships. Many of these systems vary widely, from the Mark II Talon IED robot to autonomous submersibles like the Boeing LX-UUV Orca. However, one of the biggest problems a military ship can experience is a fire. Because of the tight compartments and large amount of fuel and munitions on board, even a small fire can turn into a huge problem. That's where the Saphir comes in. Short for Shipboard Autonomous Firefighting Robot, it is an advanced humanoid designed by the Naval Research Laboratory, specifically to aid in firefighting operations aboard naval vessels. Its bipedal design allows it to navigate narrow corridors and tight spaces on ships, much like a human could. However, it also incorporates thermal imaging cameras and sensors that allow it to detect fires, even in smoke-filled environments. Not only can it withstand extreme heat and harsh conditions, it can combat blazes using standard hoses and fire extinguishers. Like the Army, the U.S. Navy believes that unmanned vessels might be the future of both surveillance and combat. As such, they have invested billions in systems like the Sea Hunter. Introduced in 2016 as part of the DARPA Anti-Submarine Warfare Continuous Trail Unmanned Vessel Program, the Sea Hunter is a 132-foot-long autonomous vessel capable of staying at sea for up to three months without resupply. It was designed to help track enemy submarines and carry out reconnaissance missions with minimal operational costs. The Sea Hunter underwent extensive testing and sea trials, where it proved it could meet or surpass established performance metrics for stability, fuel consumption, and most importantly, submarine engagement. Modern diesel electric submarines, particularly those developed by China and Russia, pose an increasing threat due to their stealth capabilities. The Sea Hunter is designed to detect, track, and monitor enemy submarines for extended periods, helping counter potential maritime threats without putting hundreds of lives at risk. The Sea Hunter is just one part of a growing fleet of unmanned surface vessels being tested by the U.S. Navy. In the future, there may be dozens or even hundreds of Sea Hunters patrolling the oceans. Even if armed and equipped with anti-sum and anti-mine equipment, it would still cost just $20,000 per day to operate, a fraction of the $700,000 per day it takes to operate a full-size destroyer. This fact alone shows the power and potential of robotics. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.